Hey, thanks for joining us at 616 uh, Comic Reviews. Today we're going to be looking at Harley Quinn number 5, uh, New 52. Um, see you soon. Hey, thanks for joining us. This is uh, Aaron from 616 Comic Reviews. Uh, we're here uh, reviewing Harley Quinn number five. Um, uh, just to start out with, I guess since the cover's on right here, I'll have to mention that this is not my favorite of all the Harley Quinn covers. This is the square jawed Harley is what I like to call her. Um, I do like how they had Cyborg, man. He talks about how, uh, how he's got the most state-of-the-art uh, technical um, you know, armaments on his arms and whatnot, but it looks like it's old hubcaps and stuff, so I think that's kind of funny. Um, although he is an old, uh, an old henchman, uh, you know, old uh, CIA type guy. Um, so anyways, Harley Quinn starts out, they're both sitting there talking about uh, uh, the hits that she uh, needs to perform for him to be able to figure out who's uh, put the hit out on her life. And they, you know, they talk about that for about a panel and a half, of course, with really good comedy, really good writing. I think the art is on point. I mean, just looking at it, it's, it's beautiful. Um, to be honest with you, the comedy, of course, is Harley Quinn all the way through. Um, you know, next thing she, uh, she decides to head home after she's done talking with Cy Borgman and uh, she sees Tony, of course, big Tony, uh, one of her tenants. And uh, she decides that, she, you know, he gives her free tickets to go see his uh, burlesque show or something, uh, which is kind of like, kind of like burlesque and a freak show at the same time, you know, depending on the day. Um, so anyway, she's watching, uh, watching the performance, which is kind of like an island themed performance. And uh, she sees this, this girl come out of this pot and she's mystified. And uh, of course, being Harley Quinn, uh, she hears there's going to be a sacrifice, and she doesn't quite understand that it's not real, so she just runs as fast as she can to uh, to tackle this guy and stop the blood sacrifice, of course, ruining Big Tony's performance. So uh, after that, uh, she uh, goes home, and she lays down, and uh, she falls asleep, kind of looking over the dossiers uh, that she, of the people she's supposed to uh, you know, kill the next day. And she goes into this really cool dream state, which is one of the things I love about Harley Quinn, is that this, they're able to do these bright, like psychedelic kind of dream states. And it's a uh, it's very, very cool art. I mean, and, and visuals that you just normally wouldn't see. You know, I mean, it's, you got Harley Quinn over here and an egg that's breaking open and a, and a, a, a bear that's pulling his, almost looks like a Russian bear, but it's pulling his uh, his own fur off to give it to her as a coat. It's just really kind of cool art. Um, more, I think it's about, a lot about her fears of what's going on around her, actually. Um, and they con consistently talk about that type of thing in Harley Quinn comics. You know, they're always looking at her fears um, and, uh, and her psychosis and how they kind of intermingle. So anyways, uh, so next day she gets up, she goes, she wakes up, she gets dressed and she meets Cyborg on top of a rope to assassinate the people. It's actually at night. They shoot across using a, a grappling gun and bust through a window, which is one of the best, uh, pieces of art in the, the comic itself. Um, you can see that, uh, he's busting through the window and she's riding on the back like a, like a soldier ready to cleave down the, uh, the enemies approaching. And then they get into the room and they find out that one of the people that uh, she needs to assassinate is actually already gonna die. And he's sitting in a, in a bed. And then this is what Harley Quinn came to assassinate him. So, uh, you know, they have a little argument about how kind of like dumb it is and laugh about it a little bit. And then of course, Harley Quinn pulls the cords, blows into the tubes and kills him. Um, and then, uh, they take a, a, a cab to the next assassination where, of course, they, uh, you know, decide to do a Harley's way for the first time where they just bust through the, the front of the gate and uh, are going for this woman who kind of looks like a like a Russian Spetsnaz soldier. Um, and the, the, the last panel is them fighting until you see a big kaboom and uh, kind of lifts you, leaves you at a cliffhanger there for the, uh, the next uh, couple assassinations and exactly what happened with this. Um, so for Harley Quinn number five, 
uh, if I was gonna rate, or I'm gonna rate it, and when I rate it, I'd have to say that I probably uh, would give it like another day. I was going a little, a little lower, but I think I, I think you know what? I think it deserves a seven because the art is really, really good inside the comic. I mean, I'll be honest, eh, this the, the cover is just not what I really wanted would want to buy. This is one of the last ones I actually buy in the sleeve, so. Uh, uh, I have to. I'll go. I'll give it a seven because the art is in there. It is a little, a little boring. I'm not a big fan of Cyborgman. Uh, he's he's funny and I like I like kind of like, I kind of like him. I, I really want to like him, but it just seems like uh, I don't know. Something just didn't ring for me personally. So uh, I guess uh, that's the end of the video, and uh, we'll see you next time here at uh, Six One Six Comic Reviews.